Hey everyone, this is Brandon Putzke with Treasure Coast Percussion. Welcome back. Today's mini lesson is on paradiddles, everyone's favorite rudiment. Yeah! If, if you're a student working from home and submitting assignments to your band director, this would be lesson three in sequence. However, any of these online lessons can be done in any order and used by anyone at any level or ability. As I've mentioned in previous lessons, the information given today is nothing new or groundbreaking, but it may give you just another way to look at how you approach a rudiment and your technique. The single paradiddle is the first of four diddle rudiments. Single, double, triple, and paradiddle diddle. The first and most basic question is, what is a diddle? A diddle is simply any consecutive right-right or left-left. Diddles can be played slow, Or fast. The next step to performing a perfect paradiddle is knowing what type of stroke or technique you're going to use with this, or any of the rudiments. So there's 40 standard rudiments. Of the 40 rudiments, 34 of them have an accent placed somewhere on them. Now just to clarify, the flam and the drag are not written with accents, however, there are automatically two stick heights with these rudiments, the grace note and the primary note. The primary note is essentially a natural accent, so therefore I'm including these two rudiments in the 34 that all have accents. The point of this is knowing that all rudiments that have an accent, and it's most of them, all require a controlled stroke, and then somewhere down the line, an upstroke. So how does one know what type of stroke is used for each rudiment? That's easy. At a very slow tempo, begin by playing the rudiment with both hands. Then separate your hands by placing one of your sticks on another surface, like your leg or a pillow. Eventually, take this one out altogether. The paradiddle starts with an accent. I'm going to play that accent at or around 12 inches or full extension. You're going to want a lot of separation between the accented notes and the unaccented notes. After striking the first accented note, control the stick by placing your back fingers around the stick. I refer to this as trapping. Some may say squeeze the stick. I prefer to use trap because squeezing might be perceived as gripping tightly and that can easily change the sound and also inhibit your speed later on. Now that you've trapped a stick immediately after it's made contact, you'll notice it's low to the drum. That's exactly where you want it because the next three strokes are all unaccented and should all be played at the same height. Make it a goal to keep the unaccented note about one inch off the drum. Here's what the first four notes of a paradiddle should look like, and notice that the first accent note is quite high, and the next three notes are all very low and equal. Before I get to the upstroke, I want to share with you one of the most common problems that occurs with the controlled stroke. Let me demonstrate a flawed technique with some consecutive paradiddles and let's see if you can find the problem. Yeah! If you said I was trapping the stick too late or the control stroke was rebounding too high, you are right. Controlling or trapping the stick at one inch off the drum is not easy. Take your time at a slow speed and really focus on trapping it low to the drum. If you trap the stick too high or have too much rebound, the stick is going to end up somewhere in this area, which I refer to as zombie land. Zombies are just mindless creatures that have no purpose. So, when your stick ends up in zombie land, and it sends mixed messages to your brain, and your brain doesn't know how to react, and therefore, it has no purpose. Allow me to demonstrate. The area above this stick is safe territory, and the area below this stick is safe territory. The area between these sticks 
is what I call zombie land. <laughs> My first note should be an accented controlled stroke. Notice where the beat of the stick ended up in zombie land. Is it a rebound stroke or was it controlled? Is the next stroke on this hand going to be an accent or an unaccented tap? I don't know either. And guess what? Your brain really doesn't know. And that's going to cause some problems. When you trap the stick too high, it essentially gives you three different stick heights and all you want is two. When you end up with three different stick heights, your progress is slowed, your muscles are doing too many unnecessary things, and you're building bad habits. Oh no! Zombie land is all relative to dynamic. So if you're playing at a softer dynamic level, zombie land shrinks relative to that dynamic. Regardless of the dynamic level, you should have a good amount of separation between the unaccented notes and the accented notes, especially in the beginning stages or when you're learning a new rudiment. All right, let's separate the hands once again. A single paradiddle is a controlled stroke, two small taps, and an upstroke. Remember, the two taps and the upstroke are all equal stick heights. Now, with the upstroke, you can play them using two different methods. One, by bringing the beat of the stick up first by bending your wrist this way. Or two, by lowering the beat of the stick toward the drum, bending your wrist upwards, which is known as the molar technique. I encourage you to learn and practice your upstrokes using both methods. You can find many online tutorials on the molar technique or your private instructor can help you with that. I will say that incorporating the molar upstroke will greatly help your speed and help maintain a more fluid legato style and sound. So keep that in mind. Okay, so if you're practicing the single paradiddle at home, I recommend starting slow around quarter note equals 60 BPM and play them as eighth notes. Really focus on the strokes, the stick heights, the playing surface, and the sound. Also, try doing a slow-mo video of yourself so you can watch it back and see every little nuance of your technique. I think you'll be surprised at what you find. If you feel like you've got that mastered, go up to 65, then 70, and repeat it several times. Don't be content with playing it a few times through. Your brain and your muscles need time and lots of repetitions to really make it stick. Continue that process until your metronome runs out of numbers. If you're making a video to submit as an assignment to your band director or for an audition, I recommend playing the rudiment open, closed, open, or slow, fast, slow. But remember, only play as fast as you are able. Never sacrifice sound quality and technique for speed, ever. Here's an example of how you would submit the single paradiddle for a graded assignment or an audition. That's an example of slow, fast, slow, or open, close, open. Again, speed is not the most important thing here. It's sound quality, which is achieved through masterful technique. Well, I hope this video helped, or at least gave you another perspective to approaching rudiments and technique. I highly encourage you to use other online resources, such as Drumio or Vic Firth. You can go to vicfirth.com for some amazing tutorials. Dr. John Wooten has a short video lesson for all the rudiments, and most of them have play-along tracks, too. You can access those from the Vic Firth website, or simply go to YouTube and type in Vic Firth Paradiddle or Vic Firth Paradiddle Play-Along, and voila! Professionals right there at your fingertips. And remember, you can always contact me at Treasure Coast Percussion. That's www.tcpercussion.com. I'm Brandon Putzke. Thanks for tuning in.